written world. Life lessons from literature. To attempt to encapsulate the poet Pablo Neruda is to miss the point entirely. He was not graspable as no human being is truly graspable and cannot be encapsulated just as the cosmos cannot be encapsulated. At least, this was his philosophy. Neruda was a Chilean, a poet, a diplomat, a socialist, a journalist, a political activist, a lover, a national hero, and the rest. His funeral in 1973 was attended by thousands, both for his politics which expounded freedom in the face of the rule of the dictator Augusto Pinochet, and for his poetry, which was also concerned with a type of untrammeled freedom. And he won the 1971 Nobel Prize for Literature, which, remember, is awarded to those who have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. Poetry, literature, as a benefit to humankind. But this essay is less about his biography than about his philosophy, than about his view of the world and how life should be approached. Consider, how do we know the world? How do we grasp it? Well, what we do is name, analyze, and classify. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who was strongly influenced by Neruda in the famous opening to his novel 100 Years of Solitude, writes, the world was so recent that many things lacked names and in order to indicate them, it was necessary to point. There was a time when things had no names, and to name is to bring into existence, to delineate, to limit, to grasp. Without language, there could be little to no understanding, and there would be even less without analysis. The root of the word analysis means to pull apart, to divide, to reduce, and no doubt this has served us very well especially in the sciences. But this realization implies an opposition which leads us to seemingly competing views of how we should understand the world. Do we pull it apart or do we build it up? For Neruda, to know the world, it should not be analyzed, that is, divided, cut and pulled apart as it is by the modern mind at all. His philosophy, as borne out over and over again in his poetry, is strikingly the very opposite. And so he writes, I have a mind to confuse things, unite them, bring them to new births, mix them up. And so at times his poetry can seem nonsensical, but what he is in fact doing is trying to give you new senses, means to know the world anew. Neruda wants to show you the relationship between language and the senses and to show you that there are realities which language and even the senses may fail to capture. And so he challenges our notions of time, our rigid logic, the arbitrariness of identity, the absurdity of countries and nations and the random sketchings of borders and even the division of the seasons and the very idea of the self essentially attacking what he sees as the asphyxiating and limiting nature of labels. And remember, he does this as a writer, as a poet. And here is the inattention. He uses language to challenge language itself. And somehow, through this poetic confusion, radiates rays of truth that we understand, somehow. And so he writes, Mondays are meshed with Tuesdays and the week with the whole year. Time cannot be cut with your weary scissors and all the names of the day are washed out by the waters of night. No one can claim the name of Pedro. Nobody is Rosa or Maria. All of us are dust or sand. All of us are rain under rain. They have spoken to me of Venezuela's of Chile's and of Paraguay's, I have no idea what they are saying. I know only the skin of the earth and I know it is without a name. When I lived amongst the roots, they pleased me more than flowers did. And when I spoke to a stone, it rang like a bell. It is so long the spring 
that it lasts all winter. Time has lost its shoes. A year is four centuries. When I sleep every night, what am I called or not called? And when I wake, who am I if I was not I while I slept? This means to say that barely have we landed into life, that we have just been born. Let us not fill our mouths with so many faltering names, with so many sad formalities, with so many pompous letters, with so much of yours and mine, with so much signing of papers. I have a mind to confuse things, unite them, bring them to new births, mix them up, undress them, until the light of the world has the oneness of the ocean, a generous, vast wholeness, a crackling fragrance. The written world, life lessons from literature.